Yo, what's going on everybody? Dom here from Lens Pro to Go and Lens Rentals. Welcome back to the channel. So I just wanted to take this video out to just chat about a funny little trick that Blackmagic Design recently pulled. So a few weeks ago, Blackmagic released a couple of pretty big software updates, one being the 7.9.1 Blackmagic cameras update, the second big one being DaVinci Resolve version 18. And via these updates, Blackmagic kind of softly revealed a pretty significant feature that is now going to be available on these pocket cam models. The 4K, the 6K, the 6K G2, and the 6K Pro. That feature being gyro stabilization via Blackmagic RAW metadata. Now during recording in Blackmagic RAW, those clips will have like additional spatial information attached to them that comes from the camera's internal gyroscope. And this is what will be used to stabilize that clip later in post. So this is not IBIS where the sensor is physically being stabilized like in real time. And also there's no turning this on or off in camera. This is just happening during B-RAW recording, only to be activated later in post. And this only works in DaVinci Resolve, of course. So if you already have questions, no worries, I did too. Luckily, you have me here to explain. So in this week's video, I'm gonna be walking you through the process of updating, shooting, and then eventually activating that gyro stabilization in post in DaVinci Resolve. And I'm also curious to see if this works in combination with lens stabilization. And can I just say quickly right before we start how weird yet totally on brand this move was for Blackmagic Design. So this was a software update, right? But it was a software update that relies on camera hardware that's been in these cameras the whole time. The Pocket Cam 4K is almost like a five-year-old camera at this point, and it's just now getting a pretty significant piece of functionality that it could have had all along. Something that definitely would have got a lot more people talking around when this camera released, especially when these cameras were released and people were just starting to get used to them and shoot on them and stuff. The overall consensus, pretty much mine included, was that you could get a great image from the pocket cams, but A, they were horrible on battery life, and B, they needed at least some sort of stabilization to shoot on them. And that was additionally problematic because they didn't really natively fit on a lot of gimbals either. So I'm glad this feature is here now. I just wish it was there when I was using this camera like very frequently. Okay, anyways, with all that out of the way, let's talk about this process from start to finish. So step one is going to be download stuff. Like I said, to unlock this functionality, you'll need the Blackmagic Camera 7.9.1 software update, as well as DaVinci Resolve version 18 or later. That's the latest version right now, but you know, YouTube future proofing and all that. And also you don't need the studio version of Resolve to do this, the free version works fine. The camera update is really, really fast. And when it's done, you'll notice there are a few changes to the interface and the display here and there, and also some added functionality depending on which pocket cam you're working with. And after that, like I said, there's really nothing you do in camera to turn this on. There's no like gyro stabilization checkbox or setting or anything like that. But there are a couple of factors involved here that are going to affect this that you should know about. One, obviously the camera needs to be updated, which you can just find right here in the setup menu. And the second factor, the recording mode has to be Blackmagic RAW. It doesn't matter which type of compression, it just has to be B-RAW because again, this is just additional information that's being attached alongside that B-RAW video clip, just like ISO, white balance information or a LUT. And the last factor you should be aware of, and this one gets like a little weird possibly, if you're on the 4K, you may have noticed that in the new layout, there is an indicator that tells you if lens stabilization is on. This isn't tethered to the actual lens. You can't toggle it from here. It just kind of shows you if it's on or not. And that's actually not on the 6K or 6K Pro, oddly enough. But why this matters is because lens stabilization is going to negate the ability to activate that gyro stabilization later in post. And you'll get to see what this looks like on the DaVinci end of things in just a second. But just to explain, if you start a Blackmagic RAW recording with lens stabilization on, it will straight up cut off that metadata to the clip. And once you go do that, the option just won't be available in DaVinci. But there is kind of like an awkward workaround to this. Actually, it, it's not a workaround. It's like a half step in that direction. You could simply just start recording and then hit lens stabilization on. And then that way, it'll still write the metadata to the clip, but you've got your lens stabilization in there too. But 
asterisk. When you go to activate that gyro stabilization on that clip, it will selectively only gyro stabilize the parts of that clip where lens stabilization was turned off. So if you were in some sort of shooting scenario where you wanted to be able to switch types of stabilization mid shot, there you go. So anyways, with that weird caveat out of the way, that is pretty much all you need to know on the in-camera end. So now you've got all your clips and you're ready to edit. Luckily for you, Blackmagic Design's whole MO is making this stuff insanely easy as long as you're using DaVinci Resolve. But just to lay it out for you, once you're in DaVinci, you'll get in your edit workspace here. You've got your B-Raw media on the side here and some of it thankfully has made it into the timeline. From here, you're literally just going to select the clip in the timeline. You're gonna look over here on the right and make sure you're in the video tab. This is not under the effects tab, the video tab. There's a few drop downs with these orange little toggle switches. You'll go down to stabilization and expand that. And here you'll notice DaVinci's sliders and options and stuff for stabilization, including this drop down for stabilization mode. And obviously here we are looking for the bottom one, camera gyro. And remember, if that option isn't there, a couple of things might have happened. You could have started that clip with lens stabilization on and it cut off the metadata writing to the clip, or you weren't recording in Blackmagic RAW, you're recording in ProRes, or the camera just wasn't updated to begin with. Anyways, you're going to select gyro and then you're going to hit stabilize above that to begin the process. And this doesn't take too long. It takes just about the same it takes to warp stabilize in Premiere, but a lot of that stuff still applies here too. This can zoom in on the image quite a bit, just like a hefty warp stabilize, but you can unselect zoom if you want, but you don't want to do that. Otherwise, there's a strength slider down here for you to change the intensity of the stabilization. So if it does zoom in too much or get weird and wonky looking on the sides, you can play with that slider a bit to fine tune it. And that's it. That's how you activate the gyro stabilization on these pocket cams. And a little bit of me just kind of realized like that the reason that took so long was because they were waiting for that support to be rolled out in the newer version of DaVinci Resolve 18. So it is kind of cool, I suppose, that they had the foresight to like plant the seed of having that gyro hardware in these cameras when they knew like possibly even years later that feature was going to be activated. So. Depends on how you look at it. All right, so that is pretty much gonna do it on this video, talking about this sneaky little update that Blackmagic Design pulled for these pocket camera models. And as always, if you have any questions whatsoever on any single part of that process, or you think I missed something amazingly obvious, let me know in the comments section below and we'll start what will hopefully remain as a discussion. Also, if you happen to enjoy this video, don't be afraid to show your virtual affection. Hit that little thumbs up button down there. And also, while you're down there, if you just wanna give that subscribe button a quick once over, I don't know, maybe click it, pop that once real quick, and then you'll be in the loop whenever we post new content. If you wanna take it a step further, you can hit that little bell button once you're subscribed and that will notify you when we post, which is every week. So people, don't be afraid to show the world your best traits that you've been holding on the inside. And we'll see you in the next one.